Let's go through uh, an example of a traverse. And this is a, a, an example that has, in my opinion, quite a bit of fidelity to what you're going to see on the exam. Number one, if you look at what we are given here, it says given. If you notice what we're given here, we have no drawing. So we're dealing with a traverse that's closed. That's all we know. Okay, and you'll notice that also in the problem statement, which I'll read here to you in just a moment, uh, there's a number of weird things in here. You just, you're not quite sure why they would give them to you. So you're given a closed traverse. The latitude, some of the latitudes going around the uh, traverse is 4.8 feet. The sum of the headings, meaning leg distances, is 7260 feet. The heading of something called leg M is 760 feet. The sum of the absolute value of the latitudes is 12,640. Why would you ever need to know that? And then the, su the absolute value of the latitude of that weird leg M is 495. Assume the sum of the interior angles matches the theoretically correct value. What that means is that the first step to balancing a traverse they've already done for you. Find well, using both the compass rule and the transit rule, calculate the portion of the error of closure in latitude assigned to leg M, and then also calculate the correction to the latitude of leg M. So this is one of those where you read it and you say, you know, it doesn't really help me to read it. I'm still confused. It seems to have a lot of strange stuff. Well, what this is, is a problem that is so concise that uh, it, it becomes confusing. As you know, you can take an exam where they give you just the bare bones. There's no context, there's no story, there's no drawing, there's no nothing. They just give you the barest essentials that you need. And in doing so, it becomes confusing. It uh, puts you off balance. And it's needless, because if you just realized everything you need is there, you would feel confident to move forward. So this is common. This is common on an engineering surveying test. So, how do we solve this thing? Well, the first thing we do is we understand that they have told us that the sum of the interior angles matches the theoretically correct value, that they've already taken care of the first step, which is take care of the angular uh, uh, error of closure. Now we can get on to correcting distances, and one of the distances we correct always is the latitude. The other one is departure, of course. So they're asking us just to correct the latitude. So what they want to know is, well, how much error is assigned to the latitude of leg M? And then if you were going to correct that latitude of leg M, what number would you use? Okay. And they want us to use the compass rule and then separately use the transit rule. Why? Uh, I'm using this as an instructional technique. I want to show you both rules. But in any given problem, you're only going to use one or the other rule. Okay one or the other rule. Now I'm going to discuss a little bit not only what's the difference between the two, they're both very easy so nobody panic, but the other one is what's the underlying assumption if I use one rule versus the other. It actually matters which one you use. Okay. All right, so by the compass rule, first off, if you're using the compass rule, the underlying assumption that you are making is that both the distances measured and the angles measured are equally reliable. So by using the compass rule, you're saying that the two sets of field measurements are equally reliable. It is not that way in the transit rule. In the transit rule, if you use that one, you are assuming that the angles measured are reliable, but the distances less so. So this means then that if you don't know anything about the reliability of the various measurements, you have to go with the first one. If you do have some concept of the procedures and equipment and everything used in the field measurements, and something about that tells you that one set is more reliable than the other, then maybe you want to start thinking about using the transit rule. Okay. Now on your exam, uh, what if they don't tell you which one to use and, and when you read the problem statement, it doesn't really speak to
to reliability so that you don't know which of these assumptions to make? The answer is the compass rule. The compass rule is more objective because you're not making any subjective judgments the way you are when you use the transit rule. So compass rule, unless there is something in the problem statement that steers you towards the transit rule, either explicitly where they just say use transit rule or where they're trying to speak to this underlying assumption about reliability. Okay. All right, so that's done. So then let's take a look at the actual methods. How do you compute them? Well, for the compass rule, you have to distribute the error of closure in proportion to the headings. Now, remember, a heading is the leg distance. <coughs> All right. So the portion of the error of closure in latitude that is assigned to leg M is going to be the heading of leg M divided by all of the headings all the way around. That ratio I put against my 4.8 feet in latitude, which was given to me. And we know that anything that is not zero in latitude, sum of latitudes, means that that's our error of closure in latitude. So for example, in this problem, the sum of the latitudes in the problem statement was 4.8 feet. For there to be zero error of closure in latitude, the sum of the latitudes has to be zero. So here, our number comes up with 0.5 feet in latitude. That means that the portion of the error of closure in latitude, that is the 4.8 feet, what portion of that's assigned to leg M? It's half a foot. The correction is going to be that same value, but in the opposite direction, it's a negative. So the correction to the latitude of leg M is still half a foot, but it's the opposite algebraic sign. Okay. The transit rule. You have to distribute the air of closure in a different proportion. This time it's in proportion to either the latitudes or the departures. So in, our so in our problem statement, they told us that the absolute value of the sum of the latitudes was 12,640. We also know that the latitude of just leg M is 495. So it is that proportion that we apply against the 4.8 in latitudes. And we come up with 19 hundredths in latitude is the portion of the 4.8 feet in latitude error that is assigned to leg M. The correction, again, is going to be the same value but opposite sign.